back now on Fox 6 News. A storm rolls through Jasper this afternoon and packs a powerful punch. We'll show you the damage that it left behind. More thunderstorms in tomorrow's forecast. A few of those could be strong, and it looks like more wet weather on the way as we make our way into the work week. And tonight, we'll take a trip down to Auburn for the reopening of Toomer's Corner. Live in HD, this is Fox 6 News at 10. Birmingham firefighters are trying to determine the cause of this apartment fire near the summit. You could see fire and smoke shooting from the roof of a building earlier this afternoon. Now this was again at the district at the summit apartment complex. This happened sometime after three o'clock today. We had a lot of pictures and videos sent in from viewers to our newsroom. It appeared that the fire was contained to one building. It does look like several units were affected. We have not yet learned the cause of that fire. It's still under investigation. Jasper residents say it came out of nowhere. A strong storm hit the city this afternoon, leaving damage in its wake. John Huddleston following this story tonight, and he joins us with more. John? Yeah, Megan, and residents also say it didn't last long, but as you're about to see, it didn't have to today. First, though, a look at the storm as it rolled through. This video comes to us from the staff at a local radio station there in Jasper. Look at the rain and the wind gust as it moved through this afternoon, a lot of it. And as this is what it looked like afterwards in the areas between 6th and 9th Avenues, down power lines, trees in people's yards, and blocking roadways. One resident told us when she got home, there was literally a tree sitting on top of a car with people inside a power line rather sitting on top of a car with people inside. Luckily, the line was removed without anyone being injured. Residents say it was a scary event, but it could have been a lot worse. My wife called me kind of hysterical, excited on the telephone and said it just hit just all of a sudden. It was about five minutes, just real intense wind and uh, real hard rain and and you know a lot of noise. Trees cracking. We feel so very fortunate that it didn't fall on the house. Mm -hmm. And even uh, our neighbor's fence across the street was not touched. Ed Alabama Power says about 300 people in Jasper lost electricity as the storm moved through. Another 700 customers in Fayette County were affected during a storm there. Megan. All right, thank you, John. Let's get a first check on the weather. Chief Meteorologist J.P. Dyson. J.P., we didn't see a lot of rain out here, but I know you're predicting some for tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the rain chances are not all that high tomorrow afternoon, but where we will see the rain, it's going to be heavy. And this time of the year, even though the thunderstorms may not technically be severe, uh, by National Weather Service standards, as you can tell, they can still pack a punch, do some damage, knock some trees down. So we'll be watching out for that tomorrow. There's a look at the radar view and you can see those storms falling apart this afternoon and this evening in West Alabama. That's where the active weather was. Now temperatures right now 74 degrees in Birmingham, 73 now in Tuscaloosa, 74 in Ganston and 78 degrees in Columbiana. Clanton coming in at 74 and you can tell early tomorrow morning when you're out the door, you're getting up real early. 68 degrees for Jasper, 71 Tuscaloosa and 69 Talladega. I don't think we'll see a drop of rain early tomorrow morning, but areas south of Interstate 20, you can see some more thunderstorms popping up during the afternoon and evening. We'll talk about those rain chances coming up here in just a few minutes. All right, sounds good, JP. Part of the Walmart in Troy is now officially open after last week's tornado. It opened at 6 o'clock this morning. It will close at 11 tonight. Those will be the hours until further no notice. The part of the store that's now open includes grocery, pharmacy, vision, and money center. The auto center, garden, and electronic center remain closed. Construction on the first on the 12th Avenue North Bridge replacement starting back up again tomorrow. Weather permitting the southbound and westbound left two lanes will be closed from 7 p.m. until 6 a.m. Monday morning. Now that construction will continue during those same times until Friday morning. There will also be rolling roadblocks with complete lane closures between the hours of 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. each night. Traffic will be able to clear every 15 minutes or less. This work will require the closure of the 12th Avenue North Bridge until that new bridge is complete, which is estimated spring of 2016. West Jefferson County Fire and Rescue responded to a series of small fires alongside Interstate 22 eastbound this evening. The multiple fires were believed to be caused by a broken part of an 18 wheeler truck, which scraped alongside the interstate near the Reader Road overpass. Jefferson County deputy says, although this is an unusual site, it's not extremely uncommon for 18 wheelers to start fires along the interstate. 
The fires were contained and no one was injured. In East Alabama, a man was struck and killed while walking last night in Gadsden. According to officials, 71 year old Gordon Williams Jr. was crossing East Megan Boulevard at Springfield Avenue. That's when we're told he was struck by a car, fell off the hood onto the roadway, and then was hit by a second vehicle. The Etowah County Coroner says there is no way that first car could have stopped in time. Birmingham police are still looking for one person after a UAB student was carjacked in the 1500 block of 15th Street South overnight. One of the armed suspects was taken in custody after a brief foot pursuit. Courtney Lewis is charged with first degree robbery. Second suspect still on the run. If you know anything about this, you are asked to contact the Birmingham Police Department. Details on a legal victory for an abortion clinic. A federal judge temporarily suspended enforcement of a state regulation that threatened to close the West Alabama Women's Center of Tuscaloosa. That regulation requires clinics to hire a physician with hospital admitting privileges. The clinic couldn't meet that requirement after its last doctor retired. Governor Bentley says he disagrees with the judge's decision. I think that this is not a, a difficult ask. I think that uh, those people who perform abortions uh, ought to be willing to take care of their patients. They ought not to, to send them to the emergency room or somewhere else and let somebody else take care of them. The clinic is one of five abortion providers in the state of Alabama. It's also one of two that provide abortions after 16 weeks of pregnancy. Arkansas is joining Alabama and Louisiana and ending Medicaid payments to Planned Parenthood. Arkansas's governor made the announcement yesterday. His decision comes despite warnings from the federal government that not funding Planned Parenthood may violate federal law. She's a blessing to Channel 6, the city of Birmingham and the state of Alabama. Fox 6 News anchor Janice Rogers talking about one of Birmingham's television pioneers, Pat Gray. Gray was inducted into the Alabama Broadcasters Association Hall of Fame today. You may remember Gray from her time spent here on Red Mountain at WBRC. In her two decades on air, she became one of WBRC's biggest stars, from weather girl to talk show host to a key member of the award-winning news team. That's Gray's daughter right there. She accepted the award for her at today's luncheon. This means an awful lot to me. Mama worked very hard through the years and uh, just that she's being recognized for all her hard work and it is hard work means an awful lot to me. Vicki Flynn says that her mother, Pat Gray, has unfortunately suffered several strokes. She can't speak very well. However, Flynn says that Gray is very aware of her surroundings and that she is thrilled to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Congratulations to her. If you have a dog, you know it can sometimes be challenging. I know that. We introduce you to a place that trains dogs in a different way. And in Auburn, Tumors Corner now reopened. Hear from some fans about the reconstruction and what they think it will do for the city. You're watching Fox 6 WBRC. You're watching the largest, most watched, most trusted news team in Alabama. Fox 6 News on your side. Watching Fox 6 on your side. Imagine teaching your dog certain behaviors by asking him or her simple questions. That's one of the techniques used by certified professional pet dog trainer Abigail Whithauer. She co owns Rover Chase, a training, boarding, and dog park facility in Pelham. Now she says that she and her trainers use a technique called bond based choice teaching. They never use pinch collars. All dogs are training in harnesses with no collars of any kind. So when you see certain trainers or people that are doing the tss or the ah, ah, so it stops the behavior. There's no question it stops the behavior, but there's two things that happen. First of all, there's the icky feeling of, oh, I got yelled at. And second of all, we don't teach the behavior we want. We just stop the behavior we don't want. What Howard says, treat your dog as though he or she is a child between 12 to 18 months of age, and it will be easier for you and your dog to understand what is expected when learning. Here at the Fox 6 Stormborn Center, we have more thunderstorms on the way in the forecast. I'll let you know what you can expect for tomorrow and the week ahead. And it's the NFL debut of a former Hueytown player. Sheldon Haygood takes us to the football field in the pros and colleges later in sports. You're watching Fox 6 WBRC.
All right, JP, it's a nice day, yeah. but maybe not for the rest of the week. Uh, <laughs> you better cash in tomorrow. Uh, okay. We'll still have some thunderstorms tomorrow, but then we really get into a stormy pattern. Oh, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Let's show you what's happening out there right now. That is the latest on your weather. All right. Tumors Corner has officially reopened. Here is a live picture from Auburn. Looks like it's hustling and bustling tonight. This comes three months after construction crews began work on a $2.2 million revitalization and resurfacing project. Rosanna Smith was there as residents and Auburn Tiger fans got the first look. She has more. Jack and Lydia Walls met and got married while attending Auburn University. Now residents of Auburn, they could not pass up the opportunity to be one of the first here when Tumor's Corner reopened. Auburn means a whole lot to us. This intersection improvement is just fantastic. And the Walls aren't the only ones pleased with the end result of construction that started back in late April to breathe new life into the intersection of Magnolia Avenue and North College Street. Tumor's Corner has never looked better than it looks today. It's so much more new and exciting than it was before. It brings in the, the beauty of Auburn itself as well as the campus and how pretty everything is here. Now with this along with the debut of the Jordan Hare Stadium video board, people are already believing that this season will be like none other. With wider sidewalks, outdoor seating and eating spaces, large benches with built in cell phone charging stations, this is sure to be a game changer. You know, Auburn's supposed to be great this year, so there's going to be so many people down here and they're going to love it. Like, yeah. absolutely. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah. I'm excited to be in the student section. It's just a tradition that's being brought back. I mean, you know, after the trees were poisoned, it was so terrible. And just to have it reopened now and have the trees back, even though we won't be able to roll them maybe this year, we will in the future. And looking forward to a an undefeated season. War Eagle. So when the Auburn family gathers together on September 12th for the first home game, we'll see just how big an impact these changes have made. And Monday morning, the city will host a blessing of the corner at 830 AM in front of Tumors Drugs. Then Friday, everyone is invited to come downtown at 5 PM to enjoy free live music, sidewalk sales and a poker run. Here's Fox 6 Sports with Sheldon Haygood. Trying to go wire to wire. Tomorrow. Okay, some big fish. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can fish like that. <laughs> they don't bite. All right, we'll be right back. And this just in, we have new information on that apartment fire that we told you about earlier. According to the Birmingham Fire Department, the fire at the District at the Summit apartment complex was started accidentally. Officials say it was caused by improperly discarded smoking materials. There's 30, uh, 70 percent 70 fire damage to the entire three story structure. Ten of the units were damaged with varying degrees of fire, smoke and water damage. Luckily, however, no one was hurt. So good news there, but that was a big fire and I think a lot of people saw it today. So JP, great yeah. weather today, but maybe not the that's not the case for the rest of the week. Yeah, it's it's a much wetter and stormier pattern tomorrow afternoon, late in the day into the early evening. We'll see some thunderstorms best chance of those storms south of I-20, a high of 89, and we'll see some more rain on Monday. So keep your umbrella in your car. You bet.